Well, everybody's very excited after the inspiring uh, consumption that we have a chance now to consume responsibly. But I'm gonna, we're going to talk about something that affects everybody, which is climate change. So we are pleased to present our report, which is called Predict Risks, Avoid, Avoid Impacts, See Opportunities. Integrate Climate Change Risk Analysis Framework 2 for the financial sector. Our team is composed by Francesco Mazel, Marie Gluck, which is from German, Francesco is from Italy, Carlos Sedan from Spain, and me, Patricia Perez from Brazil. The core values that we have that have motivated us to do this work are excellence, sustainability, innovation, and inspiring others. Here are closer collaborators, Factor CO2 and the bank called Bank Inter. So as I said, climate change is a big issue. And in order to have a better idea of the future and current scenario that we'll be living in, the following video will show some of the triggers and consequences from climate change. Thank you, Marie. So as you can see in the video, a crucial problem for intensification of climate change is connected to conventional ways of doing business, which aggravates greenhouse gas emissions and provoke environmental impacts. But what about the financial sector, banks specifically? Up to now, the financial sector does not feel accountable for climate change aggravation. That's because the sector, the industries in themselves, are not a big direct emitters of greenhouse gas emissions. However, the industry does have accountability for indirect greenhouse gas emissions within its lending, financing, and asset management activities. For this reason, we, have think, we think that the, we need to do something about. That's why we decided to, to develop an innovative tool, a risk analysis framework tool, for the banking sector to see not only the impacts they do, but also the impacts they are, um, they, are feel, they, they are posed by climate change, which impacts climate change can bring to the bank itself. So, another thing we have seen in our research that up to now any bank has introduced climate change within their financial risk analysis. Some of the reasons that can explain this at the moment, there is no uh, expertise in the market which can merge financial risk with climate impacts and environmental impacts. Another factor is the lack of availability of resources to put towards respond to climate change inside the financial sector, giving a low priority, especially right now in the, in the financial crisis, inability to see opportunities out of respond to climate change, and lack of regulations and industry standards. These are very important point. Governments and policymakers are not put any pressure on the financial sector to control their impacts. Basel one, 
two and three. These are the frameworks that banks are following, thus not including climate change, neither the necessity to address it. For this reason, our intention with this tool is to help the, the banking sector to examine the real level of exposure and impact on climate change. So the tool also will help them to allocate where the activities to mitigate climate change can be inserted in the core business activities, where it could improve its long-term strategy, and where it can improve its sustainability. Another very important and, and um, good point of our tool that it can help banks to see where it can add value, where it can innovate, gain efficiency, and, um, and gain competitive advantage. Now I'm going to pass to Francisco Mazel, which will explain better our methodology. Thank you, Patricia. Actually, I will start with climate kind of methodology, which uh, reflects a little bit the way we want uh, to innovate, as you can see from the, the quotation. And the first thing I want to talk about is uh, uh, how we innovate, because we are all familiar with all this, of this methodology, this analysis in climate change, but the difference till now is that one is used mostly to understand threats and opportunity for the business bottom line, while the others mostly refer to understanding the vulnerability of a region to understand how a population eventually can be affected by the changing climate. So what we want to do here is mixing it together and creating a tool to understand threats and opportunity for businesses assessing climate change vulnerability. So how to do that? The first step in the framework will be obviously identifying the risk. Here we call it the screening phases. So here we, we try to understand the, the main risk for the sector and relating to climate change means understanding how climate change emphasizes or eventually reduces the existing risk or how climate change poses new risk for the, for the sector. We identify four main categories, creative financial, strategic, operational, and legal. Then you will see in the matrix uh, the subcategories. Then we go on with the evaluation phases, which start from analyzing the probability of the risk to happen. Here we face the uncertainty uh, of, to forecast the future. So here uh, we need to screen the sector, understanding the trends, and eventually how climate change will strike uh, it in the future. So uh, we suggest that, as we did, thanks to our partners, uh, an evaluation panel to discuss the, 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 possibi the possibility of the future. Once we try to identify the, the probability, which will be reflected in, in the matrix as a, the size of the bubble, you will go on with the readiness, meaning uh, how ready is a company to face a risk? How ready is to eventually respond if the risk strikes the company? So in order to safeguard the performance uh, of the business. And here uh, we select a set of criteria, specifically for each risk category, in order to identify, for example, which management system the company has in place to eventually respond. How is the level of awareness of the company personnel? Are they ready to deal with this kind of risk? Uh, which is the commitment of the director? Which uh, criteria they use to identify uh, which company they, they need to invest on or which project uh, to invest on? So all this kind of consideration. And finally, the sensitivity. Here we look more at the external context, meaning that we, we need to see uh, the location in which the company operates. We need to also have a look at the competitors. How competitors are, are dealing with the risk. So in which position is the company in relation with the competitors? How also uh, is uh, the composition of the portfolio of the company? Meaning, uh, which are the client, the investor, the depositors, and which project the company is investing in, in order to see if they are affected by the climate change indirectly the company can also be affected. And after this evaluation phase, we go on with giving a, assigning a pointing to every category. So as you can see from zero to four, and uh, both for sensitivity and readiness. And here to make you uh, understand which, uh, with an example, oblivious with climate change in terms of readiness means that the company obviously has not considered climate change as a, a risk for its business performance. So they don't take measure to to mitigate their contribution eventually to adapt to the new economy uh, which we will change to adapt to climate change. They don't have mm, too much expertise inside the company to respond. They don't have any criteria to assess investment uh, uh, based on environmental and social governance, so, and so on. Finally, going to the integration instead of representing a way uh, of dealing with, with climate change that represents a great integration into the company strategy. So the company tried to transform uh, the changing um, economic context 
to make it opportunity for the competitive advantage. And for the sensitivity, a very high sensitivity situation will be in one in, in which the company, for example, operates in a location which is very affected by climate change. The awareness of people is very high, so the stakeholders put a lot of pressure on, on the company to react. And, and the company is not ready to do that. So uh, in the portfolio, this is the proof is the portfolio, maybe because it's not diversified, maybe because the sector in which the company, the bank is investing are exposed to climate change. So all this kind of consideration, very low is the contrary, meaning that the company has a diversified uh, portfolio, they screen carefully the sector in which they invest and the location in which they operate uh, as in place the proper measure to adapt to climate change. Finally, uh, uh, another um, feature of the evaluation phase is the weighting, because it's very important also to, differ to differentiate according to the sector, according to the market in which the, the bank operates, uh, uh, between the, the risk categories. So here, as you can see, uh, we consider mostly uh, two main categories, which are strat strategic risk and financial risk, because uh, thanks to collaboration engagement with risk expert. We identify that right now, as you can imagine, for the financial situation globally, uh, uh, financial risk assume the, the top priorities. At the same time, we analyze a lot of research showing how in the market um, stock valuation of company, strategic risk is uh, more and more assumably more uh, important. So meaning that intangible assets are right now more important than tangible ones. So strategic risk for us assume the second position. And finally, here you can see the, the matrix from uh, readiness to sensitivity. The risky zone is top uh, right, so as you can see, the risks are already labeled, and here you can understand now the size of the bubble, which was the probability, meaning that in risk, in the same danger zone, here you can still prioritize between them, understanding which one requires more urgency to act. Now I'm going to leave uh, the lead to Carlos, which is going to explain with a practical example how the matrix works. Okay, thank you, Francesco. And now I'm going to show you the reputation risk as an example of how to apply our methodology. As you know, and all the, the reputation risk is one of the most important risks that all the companies and, this, and in all the sector has to deal with, especially in the banking sector, taking into account that we are under an economical crisis right now. So uh, the first thing, or the first step, is to define what we understand as a reputation risk. As you can see, uh, is an existence of damaged business reputation and brand value among stakeholders when the business is viewed as responsible for aggravating climate change or fail to respond. What did that mean? It does mean how the stakeholders see or perceive the, the bank in this case it is dealing or managing climate change issues and its impacts. But how the bank can affect climate change or can aggravate climate change? As Patricia said before, it can do it in two, in two ways, indirectly and directly. Directly, since the bank is not a manufacturing company, uh, its own consumption is not really high, in, and also its waste. But, however, its indirect uh, contribution is really high because it's different to invest in renewable energies or in coal mining, for instance. And on the other hand, we have the fail to respond, which is the, the feeling that the, has the, the stakeholders that the bank has a little commitment on superficial measures to take uh, climate change. For instance, if, if, the, if the bank doesn't have any environmental management system, or if it doesn't include climate change into the corporate social responsibility strategy, and, and so on. So uh, the second stage is to define the probability, the risk to happen. Uh, to doing that, we have to know the trends, of the the trends regarding to, the, to this risk. Uh, during the last decades, uh, awareness of civil society has increased a lot uh, regarding uh, climate change issues and environmental impact. So uh, this increase uh, has provoked also at the same time that they are putting more pressure on business to include in its own strategy uh, climate change issues. And the sec and second hand, yeah, well, furthermore, uh, there are more and more uh, news and documentaries about uh, extreme weather events that it at the same time is increasing the consciousness of the population uh, regarding the climate change and its environmental uh, impacts. And finally, the, the governments are signing agreements more and more restrictive regarding emissions and regarding the, the materials that can and have or, or could be used in, the, in its own company. So considering all these trends, 
and the probability will be more than 50%. The third phase uh, will be the readiness. Uh, to analyze the readiness, we have to know uh, which are the policies and measures that the bank actually is, is implementing. Uh, we have detected two different uh, measures. One that uh, can increase the, the readiness and the others that can reduce the readiness. Or at least are doubtful to, to increase the readiness. Uh, so uh, for ones that increase the readiness, the Bank Inter is committed uh, to, for managing, reducing, and offsetting CO2 emissions. In fact, it has a, a forest in Albacete where it, uh, it compensates all its own uh, direct emissions. Uh, moreover, uh, it was the first bank to calculate its carbon footprint. It has also a sustainable policy. And finally, it has joined uh, the Carbon Disclosure Project and the Global Report Initiative, and it has been recognized in the FTSE for Good and the uh, Dow Jones Sustainability Index. On the other hand, we have the measures that can, be, can reduce its readiness. It's that Bank Inter has not increased an analysis regarding climate change. Um, at the same time, he has not environmental social indicator in its uh, due diligence when, I mean, when dealing, uh, when lending uh, the money. So what it can mean? It can mean that probably for, the, for Bank Inter, the climate change is not a, such a strategic uh, factor to increase in its own strategy. So considering all these policies and measures, the readiness uh, will be two. And finally, for the sensitivity, uh, we have to analyze how, uh, how sensitive the company is uh, regarding to this risk. Uh, as I said before, the uh, banking sector, uh, probably in Spain, but I would say but worldwide, is seen one, as one of the origins of the financial crisis. At the same time, in Spain, uh, because Bank Inter works only in Spain, I didn't say that, um, has launched different laws and regulatory frameworks in order to reduce its emissions and its, in, in its sectors. Uh, so uh, Spain uh, ratified the Kyoto Protocol, although we are really far away to comply with. The limits was 15% uh, and now we are more or less at 23 or 24%. Uh, at the same time, uh, the government uh, released a law, the Sustainable Economy, where it creates the carbon funds and these carbon funds were focused precisely to, to comply with Kyoto Protocol to finance projects to reduce greenhouse gas emissions from clean development mechanisms and joint implementation mechanisms. And finally, last but not least, uh, the European roadmap. The, the European Commission is putting or is pushing in order to achieve a low carbon economy or green, green economy. Uh, and which goal is to reduce by 80% its greenhouse emissions by, uh, 20, uh, by 2050. So considering all this, this context, the sensitivity will be high. And now Marie is going to explain you your, the opportunities and the conclusion of our project. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Carlos. I hope it's clearer for you now. I have seen some faces wondering about the methodology, but after that example, it should be clear. So we have seen now the example of how we assessed 19 different risks climate change can pose on the banks. And we want to have a closer look to the findings and the opportunities the bank can have of addressing this risk. So for Bank Inter, we found out the four main risks. The four most urgent risks they should address is the financing availability, the increase in default risk, the reputation risk, and the investment risk. To make it clearer for you where they occur, I want you all to imagine now the functioning, the basic functioning of a bank. You know, on the one hand, you have the people deposit depositing and lending money to the bank. On the other hand, you have the people borrowing money from the bank. I think this is clear to everybody. So the financing availability occurs now where the people depositing and lending money to the bank. So if the bank doesn't take a clear stand how it will combat climate change, maybe people might not be willing anymore to give money to the bank because they take into consideration socially and investment, uh, socially responsible investment considerations into their decisions. So this might be a threat. The increase in default rate is on the other side, where people borrow money from the bank. You know that every time it can happen, someone might be not able to pay back. 
But climate change will increase the default rate because of unforeseen climate events. And then we have the reputation risk, which was explained by Carlos, so no need to explain this one further. But for the investment risk is on the side what the, money, what the bank makes with its money, so where it's investing its money. It has to take care about the companies, where it gives its money to, what are they doing? Might they be climate killers? Are they taking climate friendly things or not? Because now maybe an investment into a coal fire plant might be very profitable, but in future they will have losses and this will um, again affect the bank negatively. So, but why should the bank address all this? It must be somehow be profitable. You're guessing right, we have to relate it to their bottom line. So let us see now the opportunities a bank can gain out of this. We have our vision, the truly integrated climate strategy. And out of this vision, we can derive some measures the bank can make in order to take advantage of these opportunities. So we have divided it into two performance, um, on one hand, the financial performance, on the other hand, non-financial performance. So let us have a closer look now at the financial performance. We have things which can drive the profit. Um, um, so we have new green business lines, we have new investment opportunities, for example, into energy efficiency, into smart grids, into renewable energies. On the other hand, we can have also fewer defaults because we select our people who borrow money like from the bank, we select them on the basis of climate change and if they are aware of climate change and if their investment they are undertaking is under threat if climate change um, is posing more stress on them. On the other hand, we can obviously drive down our costs because we have a more resource efficiency, we, have, uh, we can avoid costs associated with inaction if the bank is proactively now Addressing this topic, it might not have to pay in the future. And the last one here to drive down the cost would be less legal fees and know that we can decrease the, the litigation risk. So the non-financial performance is driven by the competitive advantage with, which is composed of a higher brand value and higher reputation. Because the bank is putting stakeholder engagement in firmly establishing into its processes. It is, has more transparency and it has a stronger emotional bond between the bank and its stakeholders. And then it can gain also a position as a pioneer because it's innovative. It's having new products, it's having new investment opportunities and it can take advantage of this. So let us have a look at the higher resilience in crisis times and to climate shocks. We can have a higher resilience because the bank is able to attract and retain employees, clients and uh, um, investors who are aware of climate change and who want to act against that. And then we have higher public acceptance, again, like the reputation and the brand value associated with the higher transparency. And the last one would be a higher physical resilience of the buildings and of the human resources as well. So we, if you have a closer look now, we established a non-financial and a financial performance category. But if you have a closer look here now, you can see that this is also related to the financial performance. So we have seen now that the main impacts of banks are indirect through their lending and investment activities. And until now, the responses were quite poor. We couldn't find any bank truly integrating climate strategy into their processes. So no bank is assessing their, the CO2 emissions of their people which they give money to. So we have seen the missing link between the bank and the climate change. And the inability of banks to see the opportunities of, out of addressing these risks. So we hope that our tool can help to close this gap and support the decision makers to assess the, 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 what climate change poses on them, the stress climate change poses on them. So thank you very much. So further questions in the coffee break? <laughs> Do you 
I, I have a question. Uh, I want to know uh, a little bit more about the relationship with Bank Inter and d how you tested this. So, just and how what the results of that testing were. So basically, uh, as you can imagine, when we deal with this kind of complexity and trying to understand trades and opportunity, you need to understand quite well the sector and the company you are, de you are dealing with. So for us, it's very important to make the two uh, works to work. It's very important to engage actively with the company because it's, you cannot just read a report and, and say, okay, they are good or not. You need to, to meet people. You need to meet uh, financial analysts, the CSR department. So it actually, it's what we push to do. Uh, thanks to the collaboration of FATSU2 and CAPA, we were able to meet several times Bank Inter, so we were able to uh, perform like brainstorming session with them, with risk analysts and, and members of the CSR department, so we, we can have a better look about the company strategy, because sometimes, you know, in, even in public report, it's not possible to see really what the, comp what the company is doing. Maybe the transparency right now is not such big in the sector in general. So we wanted to, to go further. Actually, I believe is the only way to, to engage proactively. It's one of the, also the main part of sustainability to, uh, to perform stakeholder engagement. So it was our objective since the beginning, that one. Even though we had some information we needed for our report, we couldn't use it because they want to. They don't want to disclose this more. So, and our report is a public report, so we couldn't use. Like we have to assume some things, but we couldn't use all the information which was provided to us for the public report. And can I just add one little thing? Was it just the CSR department, or what did you? Hello everyone and congratulations also for you. Uh, a question in this context of, of, of global crisis and financial crisis and you have, this, you have done your project in this, in this context and you have uh, got the opportunity to talk with Bank Inter in this context. Uh, can you tell me anything more about uh, how it's linked this climate change uh, with financial crisis and, and, and how now these people in Bank Inter I don't know if you have asked this question directly to, to them, but uh, finally, climate change is, is a matter of sustainability and, and financial markets is a matter of sustainability in long term. So could you explain a little bit more or any, any comment on this? Thank you, Felix. Um, we have not only spoke with Bank Inter, we spoke with other um, representatives of financial sector. I cannot mention the banks. And truly, they really give priority, they told me, we give priority number 100 for climate change. We have a lot of, of other things we have to address and we are feeling the pressure to address before. Um, but the interesting thing is that also, some of the banks have done like a stakeholder engagement and have asked a series of problems and how the, with the which is the kind of priority the, the stakeholders give for these problems. And climate change appears at, at the bottom as well. Nonetheless, they told us that this is the time to start to think about it because the new regulations, new legal pressures will appear sooner or later. And, but the uh, important thing is that this inability to see opportunities out of this, this inability to see how much it can increase their, their bottom line at the end of the day. So I think this is the, the thing that is missing within the risk analysis to see that, to, to, to to start to think and implement these actions more. Um, you ask uh, something else, no? Banking. Well, a lot of the banks um, in Spain and a lot of the banks worldwide are doing things for climate change, but we have seen, we have found some research that they are doing that to gain some reputation and brand value. This is what motivating them. They, that's why right, it's, it's very important for them actually to see that, hello, climate change is gonna pose a risk on you. You have to address it. And in this way, they can start to, to be more proactive. It's totally reactive and just moving what high street banks are doing. Yeah. Anybody want to? Okay. Okay, thank you. Hello. First of all, uh, congratulations. Very good job. Um, I'd like to know if you could explain, please, um, how did you come up with your Waiting factors for sensitivity and readiness. Uh, so, so as I said in the presentation, the, here the, the, the challenge was 
uh, understanding the sector and the market because uh, obviously an energy intensive sector in a developing market face totally different risk. For example, reputation is not such important and legal risk is more because in the risk is something will happen in the future. So we need to, to act today in order to be ready eventually if the risk happens. So in, in a mature market like Spain, Europe and Bank Inter, the financial sector, we understand that the legal risk and the operational risk, operational risk meaning the infrastructure risk, this kind of uh, uh, procurement, humor, um, all this kind of risk eventually is not such important for our service sector. And the market as well, right now, uh, as I said, Europe is a mature market, so the people here, regulators, look more for intangible results, so reputation has some particular importance, and also, Obviously, the, the legal context is already uh, well advanced in terms of climate change. We have the energy uh, package, the energy and sustainability package of um, 2020. So we have a lot of regulation. Also in Spain, Carlos show a lot of new regulation for the climate change. So we believe that also has been confirmed by the, uh, the risk analyst in Bank Inter that right now financial, because of the crisis and the financial situation, is the most important risk because you need to, to be sustainable in the financial term, first of all. And then uh, it came to this strategic risk. So m programming a long-term strategy in order to respond uh, and to maintain the competitive advantage, or at least to survive, I mean, the market, because it's very hard right now for bankers, you can imagine.